been five months now since uh, since I uh, awoke, been awoken, and uh, sometimes it's nice just to get away from everything and just look at everything from from this angle. You know, when I when I look out at my uh, previous life, I can see a lot. And, but in this last month. Um, being awoken has allowed me to to go further, to look at other religions, and to explore atheism. Uh, what if the Bible's a myth? All of these things. So, why don't uh, you join me? Come for a walk, come for a ride, and uh, when when I do my meditation and thinking, I like to go to to a safe place, somewhere where I can just think. And, meditate. So come along with me and I'll take you to uh, a place I like to go. So uh, let's go for a walk. Yeah, we're going to take a little uh, ride on my station. We'll just fly straight ahead here. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm glad you could make it and uh, I hope you enjoyed the ride. You know, sometimes when we, uh, when we think about it, doesn't it just feel like we're in some big fishbowl and someone's watching us? Kind of like the Truman Show. You know, it just feels like that. And uh, it feels like we're on this journey. And we're, we're in this body. And uh, we, we're just going to enjoy this ride while, while we're here. So uh, while we're doing that, uh, I thought the first thing I would reflect on is uh, what we discussed last, last time. And uh, that was on identifying that the Jehovah's Witness religion is, in fact, a cult. And so I brought cult up again, uh, a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object, or a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. So when we think of Jehovah's Witnesses, um, I wouldn't really call it sinister, but if your child died of a blood because of refusing a blood transfusion or something like that, then certainly you'd look at it as sinister. Um, a misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing, a cult of personality. So sometimes cults could be uh, a rock star, could be a, a hockey team or, or a figure. Uh, with the Jehovah's Witnesses, the cult figures are the governing body, the eight figures that represent the governing body. So they would be the cult members of the Jehovah's Witness religion that uh, all the members follow because uh, they don't follow the Bible. <laughs> That's why we there's a lot of us outside and we're looking in. Just like uh, when I started out the video, it's like we're looking in on things. And once we get outside of of uh, religion and that and that's what what i had to do is just get right outside of it and then then look back in and so what i um came to realize when we look at cult we go over to the definition of religion it's not that much different religion the belief and worship in a superhuman controlling power especially a personal god or gods ideas about the relationship between science and religion so a particular system of faith and worship, uh, a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. So this is sounds to me like a cult. It's, it's very close, uh, worshiping a superhuman condition. So cults worship people, um, ideas, uh, something super than them. So it's very similar to a religion. So I, I got outside of it and I started looking at all the various religions and they're all cults. 
They all are cults. In fact, we could look at uh, Jesus and say that he is a cult leader and he started a way of things. And then Christianity is a fo cult following of Christ Jesus. And all the religions are, are cult followings of something. And then on earth, uh, if we're outside of religion, maybe we call ourselves atheist, but we follow something. Maybe we follow science. Maybe we're a cult follower of a certain scientist that we really like. Uh, maybe we, we're cult followers of a lot of different things, of TV shows. So the list goes on. Uh, it's interesting once we get out and we look in what we see. So I want to show you what I did in the last month. I'm going to take you right to my channel. And when you come into my channel, uh, you'll, it'll bring you right into the home screen and it automatically comes in with this little video. You can just pause that. And I'm just going to click videos. And if you click videos, it gives you thumbnails of all the videos I did this past month. So that's what this review is about, looking at uh, how far we're going each month uh, in this research of waking up. So uh, last, this is a three-month review um, we, we did, and then we did some videos. I took a couple of weeks off, um, and uh, then we flew out to New York on this video, SAG at the JW headquarters. So that was, uh, they wanted me to dress in black. And then uh, they wanted me to come back, uh, the governing body, I met with them. And, and realizing that this is all just satire. Uh, they wanted me to come back and run an ad for Postates Wanted because they uh, want to get this Ramaco going and they needed Bearded Brothers for uh, all the movie parts. And there's problems with him because now brothers have to grow beards and so on and so forth. So this ad got, went and uh, so on and so forth. We have uh, 788 Postates that looked at this. So uh, sooner or later, we're going to have to go back and report to uh, Bethel uh, about how many apostates are out there. Uh, this one here, XJW feels apply to David. Just, you know, uh, a little bit about how David felt um, being targeted as a JW. And then we talk, we, I had an interview. This is a real one. You know, these interviews are, you can't really fake anything or fly into outer space. Uh, this one was when I changed my logo, stepping outside of the watchtower. And then this is a little bit of a Rutherford dance again. Uh, I liked that Rutherford dance song. Then I started exploring God and beyond. Can I find spirituality in religion? So I started looking at all the other religions out there. And I found that uh, they all kind of have something in common. So then can I worship God outside of religion? Part one, we talk about that. Part two, spirituality, but not religious. You know, maybe I want to look at astrology or something like that, but I don't want to be religious. I'm still spiritual. Or maybe I want to be Christian, but not religious. I don't want to belong to a group or go to a church, but I want to be Christian. Uh, so we explored all that. Now, this one was just, just a woken realization. It's very quick. It's kind of a funny and, you know, for a lot of us who spend a lot of years uh, in the organization, we find out that we're broke when we get out. So that was just a little realization one day. And this one's kind of cool. Breaking news, cult at Devil's Lake. It's out where I live. And there's a big assembly hall out there at Devil's Lake Corral. So it's kind of fitting, Devil's Lake. Now we get on to love, experience it. Uh, we have winter time here in Canada now. And so I'm just showing you some little chickies. Love, learn about it. Uh, we cover the seven facets of agape love there. That's quite an interesting journey. And then I started down love and charity in churches. Um, and I found that uh, the churches don't give as much of the donations to charity as we thought. In fact, they're not even on the list for helping orphans and widows. Uh, although I know some of the churches do, so in all fairness. But the Jehovah's Witnesses do not, not even within. So that's an interesting video. And then we go over to Love of Earth and Religion Part 4. And I thought this one is worth watching because it shows that all the religions on earth, all of them, Islam, Hinduism, everyone is honoring the earth and planting trees. The only group that's not planting trees and that have demonized the date they're using for planting trees is Jehovah's Witnesses. So you got to watch that. And in that video, I show how 
they are burying toxic chemicals from their print, printing factories uh, in the soil at the Watchtower Farms. Really good video to watch. Then we start playing with the movie. I call it the movie, you know, finding God in the internet. And uh, that, that's kind of a funny movie, a little bit. Uh, JW Org, Remembrance Day, Lest We Forget. Well, JW Org has forgotten. Um, that's an uh, interesting video to look at as well. I gave it all to the Watchtower. That's my little poetry ones, just, you know, expressing how I'm feeling. And this is another one. Uh, I did dedicate this to all the XJWs, another little poem. And uh, that's quite a nice video. So that brings us to today. Now, I wanted to, uh, uh, so, so over the next month, we're going to be exploring a few things. And I'm going to show you that in a second here. But I also wanted to show you Patron, because at Patron here, uh, like this poem here um, on this last video, you can go to Patron. And you don't have to pay to go to my Patreon site. Uh, you just come right into my site and you can see the poetry. So there's that, that video. And, and it's bigger thumbnails. Some people like the, uh, the drivers better. So, for instance, here it takes strength just now. And uh, so we'll load that one up. And there's that whole poem there. So you can take a look at it. And, and you don't have to pay to get into uh, Patreon to uh, to view this I, I make all my stuff public but if you want to support me and you want to donate you're more than welcome to uh, all creators uh, have a patreon site and it's how a lot of the creators pay their expenses so it's like anything else so but that's not the purpose of this month's review the purpose is to show you how to get around on my site and uh, if you want to take a look at my poetry it's free of charge i, I invite you to and to go to Patreon, you do not have to pay. I can make things, I can make it so you pay, but I've made my stuff public. So you don't have to pay. I just, it's easy to host poems and things like that there. So I want to show you where I went next, where I'm going next. And uh, where I'm going next is uh, the Sumerians and the aliens in the Bible. I just plugged that in. And when we look back and we start reviewing the Bible and myths, and we start to wonder, well, okay, how far back does the Bible go? Well, the Sumerian tablets go back further, and they're myths and stories. And then there's a story of Gilgamesh, uh, which is quite equal to Noah and the Ark. And uh, so I found some of that quite interesting. So I'm going to look at that. And uh, then uh, I've already looked at some of this stuff, why the Gospels are myth, according to Richard Carrier, Ph.D., and uh, he was featured also on some of the XJW sites. So I took a look at his videos. And uh, uh, it's interesting, by the time I was done a day or two of this, uh, I felt like quitting. <laughs> I felt like an atheist. I felt like, what, what was it all worth? And I actually felt like the Bible was uh, just, you know, we're all hooped. This is all. And, and so you wa I walked around for a couple of days like that. And uh, I don't know. I, I didn't feel good. It didn't feel right. So I did some more researching and uh, religion comes from ancient astrology and sun worship. So then I thought, well, you know, maybe everyone's worshiped the sun, the son of God, the sun. Uh, so there's another track, ancient astrology and sun worship and religion all in the same boat. So uh, is it all connected and are they just all stories? So then I started looking at, does science believe in a creator? And I thought this was interesting. Um, this guy, you recognize him, how science could prove the existence of God, uh, Michio Keku, however you say his name, but uh, you recognize his face, especially off ancient aliens. I think I've seen him and I started looking at some of that. And that takes you into another world of, uh, of thinking. So now I just want to play this a little bit, just just so you can see. First wanted me to be as American as possible because they were in a concentration camp during World War II. So they sent me to Presbyterian Sunday School, where I learned all about Genesis and all about the parables. So I've had these two conflicting ideas in my head for years, but now we can meld them together into a single theory. Our universe had a Genesis. Our universe had a Big Bang. There was an explosion. But these explosions take place all the time. 
universes keep budding off other universes. And what is the universe expanding into? Expanding into another bigger arena, the arena of 11 dimensional hyperspace. Therefore, our bubble is expanding in Nirvana. And so here. So I, th I thought, I don't know if you caught much of that, but I thought that was interesting. And uh, even the scientists are, are looking at the fact that uh, we had a beginning, we had a creation. And uh, there's different sciences. There's a string theory and there's the uh, bubble science, the duplicate universes. And that could all tie in to what the Bible talks about, because the Bible talks about different places, uh, heaven and hell, different universes, perhaps, perhaps right here. So I think I have a lot to learn if uh, exploring down the, the signs of, of God, that there is a God, there is a creator, because even a lot of the scientists are realizing that. And math uh, is telling, them, telling us that there is a creator. So I want to go further and uh, I want to ask the question, because if, if we think that there isn't a creator and I walked around for a few days thinking, I, you know, maybe I have to be an atheist. Uh, then I start asking myself, well, belief is so important though. Like I think being just believing in nothing is, is going backwards. And I, I don't think I can do that because, uh, here, here it is. We use beliefs to help us understand the world around us. A person's beliefs will guide them in their decision-making and response to situations. Beliefs are usually formed in childhood or any other significant formative experience. So people often ask, um, are our beliefs important? Well, uh, they can offer a sense of comfort, purpose, connection to others. And this is especially true during challenging times, you know, uh, when someone dies in the family. Uh, beliefs may affect the healing process and improve the quality of life. For some, sharing thoughts and feelings can make adjust, adjusting to cancer easier. So beliefs can certainly make a difference in, in how our body responds. Now, here's another one. Is it, is it important to have a belief? We must believe in ourselves. If we allow doubt to take hold, we will subconsciously sabotage our own efforts. One of the strongest influences acting upon us is the unconscious attraction pulling us to the person we believe we are. So it is important that we hold positive self-belief at all times. How does belief affect a person? A Scottish, a Scot learned our belief shapes our thinking, which influences our behavior. When the gap between what we say and what we really do narrows, tough decisions become easier. High stakes situations demand that we make our decisions based on our core values, the intersection of what we believe and how we behave. So let's take this a little further. How do beliefs shape our reality? Your beliefs influence other people's behavior. Your beliefs can shape your reality, not only by influencing your own behavior, but also by influencing other people's behavior towards you from close relationship partners to complete strangers. And so my beliefs and how I share my beliefs with you can actually influence you and, and your beliefs. So uh, our beliefs uh, make a big difference. Do beliefs create feelings? And I thought this was interesting. Emotions are simply your body's reaction to what you are thinking, whether you're thinking on purpose or not. Your belief system and other unconscious thoughts are happening on the autopilot at all times and often cause emotions. So yes, our beliefs certainly do uh, shape our thinking. So that's about as far as I went. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Jehovah's Witness religion and a lot of religions. Uh, I know when I was in the religion and I had the belief, well, we didn't really look outside the religion or we were counseled not to, but we believed in what the religion was about. And sometimes that's an easy way to go. It's uh, easy, well, you know, it's in the watchtower. so. You know, it, it, we become lazy in our thinking. But now we get outside of it and we realize, well, all religions are basically the same. Uh, they're all about money. Uh, very little of them are about charity. And in fact, there's all the big charities in the world are non-religious. So then we ask, well, what, what is religion doing? Well, religion gives us all beliefs 
and it helps us, I guess, in many different ways to, uh, to, to get through life. And uh, so then I go to my next question. What's the top beliefs in the world? Well, Christianity is at the top. Then we have Islam. Then we have irreligion, no religion, I guess. And then Hinduism and then Buddhism. So you, you realize we're the third largest, no religion, outside of religion. We're the third largest. And that's why they're worried, by the way. So then we have Hinduism and Buddhism. So we're going to, uh, uh, I'm going to explore all these religions. And what I'm going to look for is, is there a commonality with all the religions on earth? Because if, if there really is a God that's up there, and according to the Bible, it says that God is not partial. In fact, the Bible says that God looks to each of us individually and there were, that we're individually accountable, not through the religion, but individually. So then if God's up there and God's looking down, he's not looking at religion. So there must be commonality between all the religions on earth and God's real message. So I can cut through all the myths and stories and kind of streamline this process. So I go over to uh, my next uh, topic. What do religions have in common? So uh, we'll just leave it at here, this one thing. It says, the thing is that all major religions have is the golden rule in common. So we'll explore that, this golden rule, and see what that golden rule is all about on some of our upcoming videos this month. And we'll see how that looks uh, in all these other religions. So the last point I want to leave you with is right here. Was Jesus a real person? And uh, I walked around for a bit as, as an atheist and I was feeling depressed. And so finally, I started looking back at this. And, uh, and, this, and, and I looked at a lot of uh, different videos, did a little bit of research. But here it is. Virtually all scholars of antiquity accept that Jesus was a historical figure. And attempts to deny his historicity have been consistently rejected by the scholarly consensus as fringe theory. So the carriers, the skeptics that are out on the outside selling a lot of books and trying to dispute the Bible, they're making money and they're getting out there, but uh, they're calling those guys fringe theory. They're saying that uh, uh, all the scholars on earth are saying Jesus was real. So guess what coming up uh is uh, a whole season about jesus so we're going to have a lot to discuss so i invite you if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and uh, please share my channel with others this is how us creators can grow our channel grow our audience and it makes it all worthwhile i really enjoy the comments that you guys make and uh some days i feel like quitting i get up in the morning and there you guys left some comment that just you know, makes me want to keep going. So uh, soon uh, we, we'll, we'll get enough subscribers so that uh, YouTube will fund us a little bit. I don't know how much, but uh, uh, it, it takes a lot of hard work to get there. So I really uh, give all those uh, paw states out there a lot of credit because they're working for absolutely nothing. And there's a lot of work that they put into these videos. So I want to give all the paw states a thumbs up and uh, keep up the good work because we need to break apart uh, this religion that we were a part of. We're, we're the experts. We've, I've had 30 years in it, and I know a lot of the apostates out there have had longer, and some of the research and uh, the time that these apostates have been online and really helping people, because that's what they are as a help center. And uh, in my opinion, God sent them. God is what's inspiring the apostates to to carry on and we need more apostates uh, online and sharing their experiences because we see that as this religion crumbles uh, more and more people will uh, need somewhere to go and uh, need some kind of relief so that's about all i have to say for this month's progress folks i appreciate all the subscribers uh, but uh, until next time Keep living your life with love. Bye for now.